Let's look at interpreting the parameters and the parameter estimates in simple linear regression. Here we have our simple linear regression model, where the mean of y for a given x is equal to beta naught plus beta 1x, this line. The y values themselves do not fall precisely on this line, we have this random error component representing the fact that the y values vary about that line. Beta naught and beta 1 are parameters. Beta naught is the y-intercept and beta 1 is the slope. But what does that actually mean? Well, suppose for a moment that x is equal to 0. If x is equal to 0, this term is going to drop out and we're going to get that the mean of y for a given x is equal to beta naught. So beta naught is the true mean of y when x is equal to 0. But depending on our data set, this might be a massive extrapolation. A value of x of 0 might be far beyond the range of our observed data. And so talking about the true theoretical mean of y when x is equal to 0 might not make any practical sense. Sometimes we might simply view it as the y-intercept, which allows us to plot the line. Now what about beta 1? Well, if x were to increase by 1, then the mean of y given x changes by beta 1. In other words, beta 1 is the change in the mean of y for a 1 unit increase in x. Now note this isn't necessarily a causal link between x and y. Or in other words, if we force a change in x, that doesn't necessarily force a change in y. We are simply trying to see if there is a relationship between x and y. Let's look at the parameters visually here. Here I've got a data set and I've plotted in this true line. The mean of y given x is equal to beta naught plus beta 1x. We're going to pretend that we know beta naught and beta 1 in this particular problem. And if we look down here, when x is equal to 0, if we go up to the line and then over here to y, this beta naught is the true mean of y when x is equal to 0. And if x increases by 1, then the mean of y increases by beta 1. If x increases by 3, then the mean of y increases by 3 times beta 1. Now we're not typically going to know the true value of these parameters in any given situation. We're going to get sample data and we're going to estimate beta naught and beta 1. Here I plotted in weight versus length for 13 smelt in a finished lake and plotted in the least squares regression line. Beta naught hat, our y-intercept from the sample, is equal to minus 27.2. This is the estimated mean weight for a smelt that has a length of 0 centimeters. Does that make any sense from a practical viewpoint? No, it doesn't, but it's not a big problem. That value of x of 0 is way out here to the left. And so that would be a gross extrapolation, way beyond the range of our observed data. So we wouldn't really view it in that interpretation, that the mean weight of the smelt is this minus 27.2. That doesn't make any sense from a practical viewpoint. But we simply view it as the y-intercept, and we need a point on a line to plot the line. Beta 1 hat, the sample slope, is 2.9. And this is the estimated change in the mean of y for a one unit increase in x. Or in other words, the estimated difference in the mean weight for smelt that differ in total length by one centimeter is 2.9 grams. There is one more parameter that comes into play when we do any statistical inference, and that parameter is sigma squared which represents the true variance of y at any given value of x. Our simple linear regression model assumes that the true variance of y at any given value of x, in other words, the true variance of y here, and the true variance of y here, and the true variance of y here, are all equal. Our simple linear regression model assumes that the variance of y is the same at every value of x, and that variance is equal to sigma squared. Now, sigma squared is a parameter whose value is typically unknown, and we're going to estimate that with sample data. And we're going to estimate that by s squared, s squared being the estimated variance of y at any given value of x.